Hey, I'm Josh with Nine Finger Wrenching. and thanks for clicking on our video. Boy, have I got an adventure to share with you today. I went and did my first autocross this past weekend. So I want to share with you everything that led up to me doing my first autocross, what it took for us to get to the starting line. A couple months back, I had seen a, an event going on and it was called Autocross. So a couple weeks ago, there was another one that came up and I went and checked it out. curiosity seeing those cars out there tearing up that autocross track when you hear the words like autocross you think you got to have like a race car well I got out there to the event and people had all kinds of different cars it got me to start thinking hmm could I do this with my wife's Hyundai Veloster well the event popped up again next thing you know I registered as I was registering for the event they would allow you to pick a number so naturally I requested number nine so I made some race numbers and put them on the car. I made a nine finger wrenching banner to go across the front windshield. Preparing for my first autocross was like gearing up for battle. I had to research and figure out what all I needed to do. Naturally, the first thing I needed to do was check the car over. I needed to check all the fluids, check the lug nuts, the tire pressure. I had to get the car ready for what was coming. One thing I had found out I needed was a snail certified helmet. It has to be snail 2010 or newer. So I had to find out where I could even find one of those in Memphis on the spur of the moment. Luckily there was a motorcycle shop in town that, that had snail certified helmets so I was able to go pick one up for under 200 bucks. Once the car was cleaned up and all the fluids topped off, I got a helmet. I think I'm ready to race. Well good morning, here we are. My first autocross. And I'm not the only one in the parking lot. We actually got a parking lot full. I'm just a new guy, so I rolled all the way down here to the end by myself. <laughs> actually, now here's a good spot. I like this this little spot right here because see more of the course because it goes down behind the building over there. So from this angle, you can actually see the back side of the course a little bit. So and we got this nice little grassy area. We're gonna pitch our tent up in. We're gonna put the Velociraptor through her, her paces today. And we'll head over here to the registration. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like it looks like fun all right it's time to get registered i'm a new guy i'm gonna need some help <laughs> all right i'm all registered i found out what my class is i'm i'm class hs so uh all right and then they said i'm running a novice class and that's definitely true it's getting exciting getting ready huh yes sir <laughs> Man, sweet car. Appreciate it. I put down my sponsor was Nine Finger Wrenching. Maybe we'll start a new division, Nine Finger Racing. Once I knew I had everything together as far as getting ready for the race goes, then we had to pack chairs, the tent, the hammock, cooler, get all the things that they would need just to sit out there and spectate most of the day because it's pretty much an all day event. Let's go walk the parking lot real quick. Check out all these rides. I know that one right there, I think, had the best time here about a week or two ago. Man, that's cool. Dang, look at that thing. That is sweet. Thank you. 
dude, that thing looks awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Got some carbon fibre on there too. I like that. I love carbon. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Firebird is sweet. Thank you. Man, that's pretty too. Where's the motor? <laughs> you know, I actually get that more than you would expect. Oh, really? <laughs> People don't know about the front boot? I guess not. All right, here's nine finger wrenching camp right here. Daisy, what do you think about all this, girl? What do you think about all this, girl, huh? I know, it's gonna be a wild day, girl. Danita's all set up here. Blankets and popcorn. Oh my. And mimosa. James has found a nice place to chill. And I think Ben's over there throwing a Frisbee. All right, so there's the starting line. They got these little light beams that you break with the car and I guess that starts your time. The lady is gonna walk the course with me. We're both gonna walk and act like we have any idea what we're doing. One thing I've learned about Memphis, Tennessee, it's just a big little town. And luckily, one of my buddies was out there, Chris Irvin. Oh, thank you. I've been around four times now. Yeah. Yeah. So, how you doing? Hi. This is Chris Irving, a local legend. Oh, nice to meet he you. He went and stole my damn Tanglefoot. Uh, oh, K O M. K O M. I one of my proudest K O M. And he went down there and snagged it. Well, the problem is, I got in a thunderstorm on him last 10 miles uh-huh yeah yeah you told me i was like oh man you even had bad conditions and still beat yeah. me so i don't even know what to say but so my understanding is if the cone's down and pointing you go yeah. to that yeah. outside yeah. so here you're going to go out wide go through here i walked it with the guy that designed it too so, and we turn around. i said look i'm going to go here so he's it's a, mm -hmm. I was so glad Chris was out there and walked the course with me and helped explain what all the cones mean and kind of the basic route of the course. That was crucial for me understanding things. I guess if I've got three pieces of advice from doing this one time, it is walk the course, walk the course, and walk the course. Because these cones come at you so fast. If you don't have a little bit of an idea, you're going to be screwed. <laughs> There's my car, yeah. Why aren't you driving it? You ought to take a couple turns. I said, everybody make fun of me because I'd be like, turns along. <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> well, honey. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. Um, oh my gosh. I know it looks so simple just walking it, and I know that driving it is going to be a whole different ball game. And that little car that doesn't seem fast on the road is probably going to is probably going to feel crazy. Your car is going to be like a race car. Oh, they're going to do a novice walk. Like I said. Walk the course as many times as you can walk it. The novice walk is a great opportunity to go and learn the course, ask questions, and try to make sure you don't make any mistakes and have DNF runs. Plus, it's a great time to meet some other drivers and hang out and cut up and have a good time. That's what it's all about. Go fast. 
I'm gonna go so fast. <laughs> I may go 34, 35 miles an hour. All right, we just finished the driver's meeting and I'm actually in the first race group. So it's time to get my stuff together and get over to the staging area. It's gonna be fun. Do a little nine fingered racing. I'm ready to race. Go get them. Don't forget to close the sunroof. Or are you leaving it open? That could make drag. I don't know what he's thinking. Though. When I finally got up to the starting line, oh my gosh, I was so nervous. And finally, they said go. I hit the gas and took off, and my little Veloster was flying. cones and twists and turns that I walked through earlier and thought I had a really good grasp on what the course was, all that went out the door. All those cool lines that we talked about and you want and the approaches and gone. It's a sea of cones out there. It's just a sea of cones and you've got certain ways you gotta go through. It's, it's crazy. And it happens so fast. Ben said I'm not fast. <laughs> From the driver's seat, everything felt light and fast. But outside the car, <laughs> it was a different story. myself navigate the course it was clear that my perception of speed didn't quite match reality Whee! let's just say I might look like a cautious turtle instead of a speed demon like grandma driving to go play bingo like a student driver the first time behind a wheel. I look like a sloth racing across the parking lot to find a tree. And then my son Ben jumped in the car for a lap and then Danita jumped in the car with me for the last two laps. So you all get six laps and they take your best lap. Some of those laps you may not get because you may miss a cone. If you, if you totally miss a turn or miss a cone, that's a DNF. If you hit a cone or knock over a cone, they just add some time on for that. Woo, that was fun. That was a lot of fun, actually. That helmet gets warm, though. I didn't realize how warm that helmet was gonna be in the car. It got sweaty. We had a pretty day here, anyway. Man. That feels so fast out there, trying to drive around those cones. That's pretty crazy. Look at my boy over here. He just living the life of leisure. Just chilling on hammock. Where's my puppy dog? 
Once I got on my laps, and it was my turn to go and be a course marshal. After I was done course marshaling, it was time for the third heat. So I went back to my little camp area. Everybody was wore out, it was all day. So they went ahead and packed up and headed to the house. I stayed and filmed a little bit of some of the faster cars. And uh, I took an opportunity to go jump in the car with another guy and ride with him. I didn't get any footage of it because you're not supposed to record while you're in the car. But uh, let's just say that that was a wild ride. Thank you, Will Tucker. out there week after week and you push your car trying to see what it'll do there's one way to find out little car and I love watching this guy drive he's pretty smooth out there I mean he killed a cone or two but man he he's really smooth Once it was all over and I checked out the results, you know, I, I'm not gonna say I was upset about them. My very first autocross, there were 50 drivers there. So out of 50 drivers, just on raw time, some of these cars are actual race cars. A lot more horsepower than my little two liter Veloster. I was in 38th place out of 50. They do a handicapping based off of your car. So with the handicap system, I was in 31st place. And then in my class, the Heritage Street, in that class, I was in sixth place. I really don't know how many cars were running in that class with me to tell you. It could have been six. I could have been sixth place out of six. But nonetheless, I, I'm pretty happy with those, those times overall. I think I could go back and do it even better now. And I totally do want to go back and do it again. As I packed up my gear to bid farewell to the track, one thing became abundantly clear. Autocross isn't just a race. 
it's an addiction. From the moment I approach that registration table to the exhilaration of crossing the finish line, the entire day was just a whirlwind of excitement. As I reflect back on my first autocross race day, one thing's for sure, I will totally do it again, even though I look like a grandma driving through the parking lot. If you enjoyed this, then check out this video right here. Peace.